Didn't even see you there. Hi there, I'm Mark from Third Shot Sports, and welcome to a brand new episode of Pickleball Today. All right, we've got a great show lined up for you today. We're going to talk about technique. We're going to talk about tactics. We're going to talk about the pros, and we're doing it all here on location at my home club, my local club. There it is. Swing Pickleball in Collingwood, Ontario, Canada. Let's get to it. things that separates levels of player is their ability to finish points, especially when they get a high ball, right? You don't see a ton of lobs happening at the pro level. I'm not saying no lobs, okay? But you don't see a ton of lobs at the pro level, the high levels, because they are so good when they get those high balls, putting them away. So why don't we do a really quick tutorial on some things you might want to know about being able to hit a good overhead smash. You ready? All right, when we're talking about a good overhead smash, what we're talking about is being able to hit this ball consistently and with power. After all, that's why you're up there, to get high balls that you can hit down. If you can hit down, you can hit hard. So let's look at a few of the fundamental technical skills here. First is how you set up for the ball. A sideways setup is really important because if you're sideways, that will allow you to turn through the shot. This is a lot like throwing a ball, and people who throw balls well tend to get sideways. If you think about it, most balls you hit with other objects, you get sideways so you can rotate through the shot. So a sideways setup is important. It's also important to use your legs here. You can see here, as I come down a little bit, that's so that you can drive upward with your legs. You can generate power from the ground up. So once you're in that sideways position, you want to load up by sort of bending down a little bit with your legs and then pushing back up at the ball. Speaking of going up to the ball, this is a throwing action. And it's not so much like you're throwing a ball forward, it's more like you're throwing the paddle up at the ball. You're accelerating upwards, right? A good throw is very much like a good overhead smash and vice versa. So you wanna really develop a good throwing action to be able to generate that power. Where you make contact with the ball also matters. This is called your impact point. And when you hit an overhead smash, you want your impact point to be as high as you can reach and slightly in front of your body, between your body and the net. This full extension here is going to make it easier to generate speed, which again is the whole point of hitting this shot. So you're going to want to have that high impact point that's low in front. You're also going to want to pronate as you hit this ball. And pronating is really just turning. It's turning your hand. So if you have a continental grip, kind of like you're holding a hammer, then as you go up for the ball, you can see here how my hand and wrist turn, and then you get that pronation. It's a little bit like uh, if you were looking at your own palm, and then you turn to high five your friend, that would probably be a pronation. And pronating is really important because you can see here as I use my hand and wrist and forearm, that is a good way to generate power. People who stand up at the net with a different kind of grip, like let's say an eastern forehand grip, they're more likely that they're just going to bump the ball or sort of push the ball forward. You see this very little pronation here, right? This is not really what you want. You're going to get the ball over the net, of course, but it's going to be hard to get power. So using that hammer grip, that continental grip, means that the edge of the paddle will be coming forward, and that will force you to turn your hand and use your forearm to pronate, and that's where that power is going to be. For some of you, that may feel a little bit strange, it might take some practice, but I'm telling you, if you can get this pronating feeling down, you are going to get power fairly easily. So there you go, those are the elements of a good overhead smash. Use your whole body, use your legs, get that pronation, make sure you reach up nice and high. Good luck. Not too long ago, I was in Red Deer, Alberta for some pickleball coaching work, some pickleball coach education work, actually. And I went to the outdoor courts once, checked them out, wanted to highlight them for you, but they were closed and I was sad. So I got into my car and I drove because there are some indoor options in Red Deer. If you're not familiar with Red Deer, Alberta, well, Alberta is out in the western part of Canada and Red Deer is a small city there, 100,000 people. It's right in between Calgary and Edmonton. And boy, oh boy, is Red Deer like a sports city. They hold lots of events. 
And uh, look at this beautiful, it's called the Collegate Center. It's this multi-sport facility run by the city of Red Deer. And uh, this is a great place for us to have our coach education training. Before we show you some of that, just look at some of these other facilities here. There's soccer, there's gymnastics, of course, there's hockey, there's rock climbing. There's all sorts of really cool facilities here. And I love when cities will do this, when they will invest and they'll put the money and time and effort into making these facilities that are great for so many people who want to do so many different kinds of things. The rock wall I thought was really cool. That was busy all weekend long. So finally, here we go. We find the multi-purpose pickleball courts. These are not the nicest pickleball courts you've ever seen. Um, there uh, leaves a few things to be desired, but you know what? They worked. And you see this commonly. These are badminton nets that just get lowered. Badminton courts, of course, are the same size as pickleball courts, except for the kitchen line. And this worked out just fine. And this kind of flooring, um, you know, it's nice and squishy on your feet. If you're going to be coaching all day long, it is pretty comfortable on the old back and legs. And here you can see these players. This was like a rec play situation. And how cool is it that you get to play pickleball underneath this rock wall? I think it's pretty neat. Anyway, these were some of the people who were taking our level one instructor course and uh, just out for a little bit of a hit. They were nice enough to let me do some of the filming here before we got going. And uh, yeah, that was my trip to Red Deer. It's a pretty nice place if you're ever in the Edmonton or Calgary area. Of course, there's major airports there. And you want to go check out the Red Deer Pickleball community. is a really vibrant community. they got those beautiful outdoor courts that are open in the summertime. And of course, the indoor courts here at the Collicut Center. Check it out. Red Deer, Alberta, Canada. Whoa. All right, so one of the challenges in pickleball is when this ball gets sped up at you, right? When you're up at the kitchen line, you're in one of these dinking battles, and all of a sudden your opponent sort of speeds things up and they try to catch you off guard, right? And sometimes that's about reflexes. It's about that ball coming at you and you see it's coming at you fast and then you figure out, ooh, the ball's coming at me fast and then I better hit it, right? And so that is part of it, is seeing that ball and reacting. But the truth is, especially as you go up in level, is that you're not gonna have enough time to see it come and then react, right? You need to do a little bit more than that. You need to anticipate that that ball is coming toward you, right? Or if it's coming toward you, that which side it's coming to as it's being sped up, okay? So I thought what we would do here is like a little test, a little at-home test. I'll hit some balls fast toward you and you can see if you can figure out where it's gonna go. Now, before we do this, let me remind you about what it is that controls the direction of the ball. The direction of the ball is controlled by the horizontal angle of the paddle impact. So if when I hit this ball, Ball, it's tilted like, I'm gonna hold it like this, but you know what I mean. If it's tilted this way, then the ball is gonna go that way. And if I tilt my paddle over here, it's gonna go this way. And if I tilt it right here in the middle, it's gonna go straight at you. So it's the horizontal angle of the paddle that determines the direction the ball goes. And so that means that if you wanna do this well, you have to be very good at seeing which direction the paddle is pointing. And it's really subtle, right? Cause that's gonna go over there. That's gonna go over there, that's gonna go straight ahead, okay? So that's my tip to you is pay attention to the paddle angle and see if as I hit this ball, you can figure out which side it's gonna to go to. Ready? All right, how do you do? You want some more challenge? Okay. Did I get ya? You all right? That was a tricky one. That last one was a little slippery there. Ready for level three?
All right, so how'd you do? Were you able to figure out which way the ball was going? The question is, couldn't you just figure it out, but could you figure it out soon enough that you didn't be able to make a play against it? It is tough, and that's one of the things that we see as pickleball is evolving, the players are getting better, is they're finding more and more ways to be deceptive. And sometimes what they're doing is they're just trying to disguise it, so you can't really tell where the ball is going until it's going there. But sometimes what they'll do is that they will actually try to misdirect you, right? They'll try to make you think, for example, they're going cross court and they instead go down the line, right? They'll try to do things that are intentionally deceptive to sort of get you going the wrong way. So that's something that you can practice on your own. Maybe pull out your own camera, take a look at yourself. Can you try to deceive a friend of yours? Get a buddy and do what I did here with you today and see if they can tell. And better yet, do it on the court with a friend, see if you can trick them, and see if when you're on the receiving end, you can really pay attention to the horizontal paddle angle at the moment of contact, so you know the difference between this and this. It's subtle, I know, I know. That's what makes pickleball tough. So if you're gonna play much pickleball, one of the things that you're going to have to learn to do is how to regrip your own paddle. I mean, I guess you could always take it somewhere else, but that's no fun. So let's do a little paddle regripping tutorial. Um, I just got a brand new paddle sent uh, to me by our good friends over at Selkirk, and this is uh, the Halo, the SLK Halo. I love the SLK brands. Uh, don't sleep on SLK. Um, look, the grips when they come with, uh, everyone, like it's always a nice grip when it comes, but everyone's kind of got their preference. They like to have their certain feel. So what I like to do is even when a paddle comes brand new and it's still got the plastic on it, I like to take that off and put an over rip on right away. So why don't you do it with me? All right, so once you get the plastic off, you are ready to go. You grab your overgrip, and uh, there you go. You've got to roll it out, and there's going to be a little piece of plastic there. Usually there's a pull tab that'll allow you to separate the grip from the plastic that was protecting it. You, of course, don't want that plastic on your grip. Do something with the garbage. And then there's a little um, sticky here. There's a little adhesive. You're going to take that off, dispose of that, and that is how you are going to affix your overgrip to the handle. Now, it's always smart to start at the bottom and then to work your way up. And how you start it really matters. It's kind of like real pickleball. If you start well, things tend to go well. So make it nice and tight right at the beginning. And you do want a little bit of an overlap here, and that overlap is gonna help prevent it from rolling up. So that little bit of an overhang, not too much, and then you just keep rolling. And you want it to be nice and tight as you go here. And as you go, it's really important that you don't have a little separation, right? There's a little separation right here, and you're gonna see that is gonna cause a problem. That grip is gonna go all over the place. So if you do see that happen, no problem. Just backtrack a little bit. Again, make it nice and tight, make it overlap just a little bit. And there's a very good chance when you're done all of this, you're gonna have some leftover. Often these grips are made for tennis rackets, so there's a lot of um, extra grip left over. Usually what I'll do is I'll just rip it, but I'm making a video here, so I want to make it look pretty. Use the scissors. And there's a couple options here. The overgrip will always come with its own little piece of tape, or you can use electrical tape. But if you're smarter than I am, you will get your tape ready before you start this whole process. So it's just available. And there you go. Wrap it around once, twice, whatever you like. Make it look good. Use colors if you want to express yourself out there on the court. But now we've got a nice, fresh overgrip and we're gonna go play some great pickleball. All right, thanks for joining me this time on Pickleball Today. I would love to know, what do you think about the show? Do you love it? Do you hate it? What's your favorite part? What's your least favorite part? Why not tell me about it? You can do this very simply. Hit me up by email, mark at thirdshotsports.com. Of course, you can find us on all the social media. We're usually at Third Shot Sports. So until next time, I'm Mark Renison. Thanks for watching.